modeling COVID vaccination and cases data mathematically using transformation graphing. This is from U Alpha Theta 2021. It is for students, but teachers can watch it also. And all information can be found at this site and it is case sensitive. Press pause is needed anytime during the video. This is what's on this site. I'll show that at the end, but there's a student a PDF, a teacher PDF, uh, 84 CE program that puts the data into an 84 CE uh, Excel spreadsheet. Uh, if you're not using an 84 or Inspire, um, and then also this same data uh, or similar data uh, about COVID data, not just the vaccination data. And if you don't want to do them singly, you can just do the whole zip folder with all the files above. And this is where it is. So the first stop is, uh, this is the, where I got the data from. This is the, the website, uh, in case you'd like to go there. A lot of inf interesting information on that website. Let me just back take you there so you can see it. And here we are at the at the uh, at this website here. Um, the nation's progress on vaccinations. The uh, numbers are here and the percentages are here. Nice looking graph, which is where we I got the data from. How you get the data is you go to a particular date and it gives you one dose, fully vaccinated percentages, and so on. So I went ahead and did all that and put that data into um, spreadsheets and other places so that you didn't have to do that. But there's also other data that's there that's interesting. I would suggest going there and looking at it and see what you think. Even by state, you can go to each individual state and see what's going on as far as a particular state. Okay. This activity can be done with either a TI-84 or 84CE and TI-Inspire. Um, I have the data in an 84 program. I have it in, in TI-Inspire. I also have it in a spreadsheet so that you, if you're using something else, you can use that data as well. So let's go ahead and start off with the, the TI-84. I'm going to use that throughout this to illustrate it. Um, it'll tell you what's in what lists and so on. So we want to place the data into whatever graphing tool you're using. So let's go ahead and do that. Now, since you can't be doing this with me, I'm going kind of quickly. I will tell you that the uh, teacher notes and solutions have screenshots, explanations of exactly how I'm doing this so that you can help your students with that. But it's more about the mathematics than it is about the technology. Uh, the technology just, just helps us be able to, to uh, do the, the calculations. So again, to get that data into the calculator, I created a program, and this one is um, called Vaccination 0706, VACC 0706, because that's the date that the data, data goes up to, July 6th. So I'm going to go ahead and run that program, and it says that it automatically places the da data into list, press enter to continue, and it tells you what list has what data. And also, just to put it in perspective, here are some dates here to tell you, uh, like March 1st is day 42 and so on. So you can get an idea of, of, of the perspective on that. All right, so let's go to um, the stat edit and see that there is the data there into the, in the list. Uh, day number and then the number of uh, doses, dose ones and then percentage, uh, two doses, percentage of population, and so on. By the way, these are in, in millions, I should tell you. The number of people is in, are in millions. So this is 13.596 million people, so you know that. So I'm going to go ahead and plot that. So the window I'm going to use uh, is probably not obvious until you kind of look at the data. Uh, so I'm going to go with a negative 20 so that I have a, a buffer zone on the on the side of the y-axis. Go up to 200, which is more than the days that we have, and maybe have a tick mark every 50. Uh, Ys, I'm also going to go negative 20, so I have something below the x-axis. Uh, go up to 220 million there, and again, show a tick mark at every 50 million. So there's my um, window. And I'll go ahead and set up a stat plot, uh, turn on this, uh, and I do want it to be a scatter plot. 
uh, list one and list two, and I'm fine with brown, so this will be okay here. And now I'll go ahead and graph it, and there's my data. It looks like I have a um, grid on, so I'm going to go ahead and turn the grid off. Usually I like to do that when I'm doing data. So there is our data right there. Press pause as needed. Now before I continue, just let me just show you the PDF of the student um, PDF worksheet, whatever you want to call it here. Um, but it has the data and the links, and it shows you what the data should look like. And then step by step on, on how you should do this. And so these are the, the directions. This is what we're going to be doing throughout this. So I just want to show you what the um, worksheet looks like. So here again, we have the plotted data. Uh, we're thinking that we could probably um, model this with three consecutive line segments, like one here, one here, and one here. Looks like they've got like three different lines that you could make up here. And we're suggesting the right endpoint of one segment is the left endpoint of the next one, and they're not necessarily the same length as you could see. For sure, that's the case. So let's go ahead, and, and again, these are arbitrary. Different people have different ones. Um, so let me just show you the ones that, that I picked here, going with the left one between and the right one. So I picked these ordered pairs here for the, the, the left segment these ordered pairs for the, the one in between, and then the right one, I use these ordered pairs. Let me show you how I got those. So here I have the data, and if I trace on the data, it'll give me the ordered pairs. So there's the first one, 1 comma 13.596, and then I went along and I got to here and I said, ooh, that looks about like where I want the first line segment to be. So there's the coordinates of the second one and so on. So that, that's how I did it, basically tracing them. And not everybody has to have the same ones, but they should be somewhat in the ballpark there. Okay. And then what I would want students to do is to be able to calculate the slope of each segment because that slope means something as far as this data goes. So let me show you what I mean here. So um, I'm going to go ahead and uh, get myself a fraction template, and I'll subtract the y's, 64.072 minus 13.596, whoops, 596, all over 52 minus 1, which I could do mentally also. I'm going to put a decimal point in this so I get a decimal in my answer. And there's my answer. And as you can see, I'm rounding it to the nearest four decimal places, 0 0.9897. I did a similar little thing for the slopes of these of the line between these two points and the slopes of the lines for these two points. Again, press pause anytime, anytime is needed. So what I'm interested in is explaining what the slope means in the context of this problem, including units. So you might want to stop right now, pause, and think about what do these numbers actually mean and include units in your answers. So pause as needed. And so the left segment, the um, this means that the average is 0.9897. Again, this is in millions doses per day, and writing is an actual number. It's 990,700 doses per day on average. Middle segment says on average 1.7299 million people were getting their first dose per day. And the right segment is, is this number here. And you can see it started a little bit slowly really took off in the middle, and then now a lot of people have gotten it, and not as many people are, are seeming to wanting to get it, okay? So the average rate of change, again, was largest here and smallest here. So what I'd like to do is, how about modeling this with, with a modeling equation? What kind of equation could do that, okay? and think about how well you think the equation fits the data. So again, pause and think about that. So
So I'm going to go ahead and um, pick one. And so for this one, um, I'm going to try Accordic. Accordic seems to work pretty well on, on a lot of data. So I'm going to go to Stat over to Calculate, and Quartic is number seven. And my data is in list one and in list two. And I'm going to store that into uh, Y4 to remind me that it's Quartic. That's, I'm, I could really put it anywhere, but I'm going with Y4. So this is my what I'm going to do. And now I'm going to go ahead and calculate that. Press Enter on Calculate. And it takes a few seconds for this to do it. It's also giving me a uh, correlation coefficient R squared, uh, which looks pretty good. And let's go ahead and graph this and see how it looks physically. And it looks pretty good, I would say, there. Let's also try a logistic one. So I'm going to go back to Y equals, and I'm going to turn off that equal sign by pressing Enter so that the equal sign does not have a black box on it. And I'm going to go to uh, Stat calculate and this time logistic is um, towards the bottom again on l1 l2 and i'll store this time in y1 not in y4 that's for sure so this is a logistic and sometimes this could take a while for this to do it uh, my computer will probably be faster than your calculator would um, sometimes this takes a while and so there is there are my values, but let's go see how it looks. So I'll go ahead and graph it in this a powder blue. And that is pretty doggone good there, okay? Especially as a predictor. Pause is needed. So Quartic looked like this. And as you can see, it's kind of a little bit lower here as we're, as we're going past the data. So for prediction purpose, not so good. Extrapolation, not so good. Interpolation in, within the data looks pretty good, okay? Logistic looks pretty good all the way around, okay? Uh, logistics definitely seems to be a better predictor here. So we go ahead and do the same thing. Um, number of full vaccinations with day numbers, okay, and this is what the data would look like. And I'm going to kind of skip that, okay, uh, and, and go more towards the end because I want to show you also the case numbers. And, I, and we only have about 15 more minutes left, so I would like to make sure we get to those other things. So just skipping through here, uh, again, it, it's showing you that you could again do this in three segments, uh, and again, the, Everybody could have maybe a little bit different coordinates for their endpoints and then show you uh, what the slopes mean. Okay, again, I'm going through this kind of quickly. I'll leave that for something for you to do. Uh, but again, you could model this with one modeling equation. And again, I did a quartic. And you can see the quartic looks good interpolation wise, but when it goes to prediction, it's falling off because sometimes quartics like to do that. Uh, so not a great one. And for logistic, which could take a while, took me over a minute on my calculator. Really, really good. Really, really good predictor here. So here's a good question for you. With the data that was supplied, how would you approximate the number of people in the population of the United States using just that data? So go ahead and, and pause this and think about that for a minute. In fact, I'll, I'll give you a hint. I'm giving you the data right here. Remember, this is day number, number of first vaccinations, and percent of first vaccinations. Okay, so again, pause is needed. So the day I picked right here, I picked March 1st. At, it's the 42nd day. Nothing special about it. But on this particular day, 50.733 million people are, are vaccinated with one dose which is 15.46% of the population, the United States population. So I'm going to give you one last chance to use that data to, to approximate the population of the United States. So pause is needed. All right, so here's, here's how I, I did it. See what you think. So 15.46% represents this many people. And so I decided to use a proportion and said that 15.46 is to 100, because that's what percent means per 100, is how many people per 
uh, divided by the total number in the U.S. population. So these two ratios should be equal. And so to um, solve this proportion, uh, we're going to multiply, and I'm going to get that the U.S. population is 100 times this number divided by 15.46. And using a calculator, turns out that it's 328,156,533. Pause to check me on that one. So let's go ahead and round our predictions to the nearest million people. So that to me would be about 328 million people, because just, just to go to the nearest million. And I have this other website, www.census.gov forward slash pop clock forward slash. That's kind of cool. In fact, let's go there so you can see it. So this is that website right here. Okay. And it has not only the U.S., but a world population clock. And you can see that the population is changing uh, continuously. The po world population is growing real quickly. So a lot of cool data on this uh, website. Welcome to go look at it and see what you think. Um, but I wanted to get what the current population is. And it's about 332 million, which isn't too far off from our 328 million. I mean, you know, percentage speaking. So when I did this data here, uh, this is the population for March 1st, 332 million, and you can see we're off by 4 million. All right, so we are about 4 million off, but let's go ahead and calculate the percent error. The actual population is about 332 million. We had 328 million by using our calculations. So go ahead and take a few seconds and calculate the percent error. All right, so I do need a, a fraction template here, and so it's going to be 100 decimal point, and that is so I have a decimal in my answer, times the quantity. Um, 328 was the what we call the experimental, minus 332, and these are all in millions, so I don't need to type all those zeros for, for those. And then divide, I want to compare it to the actual, which is 332. And so we're off by 1.2%. The negative means that our answer, our original uh, estimate was too low. That's what the negative sign means. And being off 1.2% is not too bad uh, for that. So I think that's, that's pretty good. All right, so now let's t turn our attention to um, COVID data, COVID cases. So we'll go ahead and do that. And so this is a different website uh, that you'll have access to on the PDF uh, that shows the total number of cases starting with February 15th of 2020. And you can see how they grew somewhat slowly and then took off uh, in the winter, fall and winter months, and now started to level off, especially when, once we started getting the um, vaccinations here. So again, uh, the data is in a program on, on an 84, or you can use an Excel spreadsheet. Uh, Inspire, Inspire also has the data in it. So um, let's go ahead and put that data in and, and try to plot that data. So I'm gonna go ahead and run a program. This one, it's called uh, CV uh 070121 because this goes up through July 1st of 2021. So I'm going to run that program. Places coronavirus case data from February 15th, 2020 to July 1st of 2021. It tells you L1 has days 1 to 502 and L2 has cases 1 to 502. And then press enter to continue. And there are others here that we'll come back and talk about a little bit later. So let's go ahead and plot this uh, using an appropriate window. Um, so again, second y equals stat plot is on. Um, it's going to be L1 and L2. Again, it'll be brown. So we've got that. Um, as far as a window goes, this again by by guess and check what the window would be. Uh, 
So for the window, um, went negative 20 to 550 in steps of 50. But for the Y, min, and max, I went from negative 5 million to 40 million, showing every 5 million, okay, so that I could see the data. And now when I graph it, you can see the data shows up pretty well, very similar to what we saw on the website. Pause is needed. So the first question is what type of equation or equations could be used to model this data? So pause to think about that. How could we model this data to be able to extrapolate and predict the future? And two possibilities like before are quartic and logistic. So let's go ahead and see what those would look like. So for a quartic one, uh, again, I'll go off to the home screen and stat calculate and quartic is number seven. Again, L1 and I'll put that into um, alpha trace Y4 and calculate it. And again, it could take a few seconds, not too, too shabby. And let's see what that looks like. And as you can see, starts off being decent, but for extrapolation, this is going to kind of stink. So we're going to have to try a, um, a logistic one. So let's go ahead and try a logistics. So again, stat, calculate, and logistics is towards the bottom. L1, L2, I'll put this one in Y1, alpha trace to get to the Y guys, Y1. And this time when I press calculate, it is going to take a little while to do that. And I, I did pause to have that do that. So here's the results we get. But let's go ahead and turn off the one in Y4 so we can just see the one on Y1. So here's the logistic curve. And wow, that is pretty doggone good. Uh, maybe not so much for interpolation, but for prediction, not too bad. Might be a little high, but looks pretty good. Now we could also consider modeling this data by doing a couple of piecewise functions and piecing them together. Okay, so think about, you know, where you would break it and how you would, you know, what pieces, what type of functions you would use to model this. So again, pause to think about that. So here's one possibility. Uh, I'm looking at maybe this piece like right here. Think of that as being not, not so much of a line, but maybe part of a quadratic, okay? And then this one right here being another quadratic, a different piece. And then the third piece, either being a quadratic or maybe even a cubic. So I'm gonna go quadratic, quadratic, cubic and see So since I anticipated us doing that, I did put in list L3 and L4, the, the data for the, like the green. And in L5 and L6, I put in the data for this blue. And for L7 and L8, I put in this data for the, what I'm gonna hope to be is a cubic. All right, so that you didn't have to do a whole lot of the work. You can do the thinking, but not do all of the nasty typing in of the data. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and do a stat calculate. Uh, of a quadratic, which is number five, on L3, second three, enter, second four, enter. And I'm going to put that in Y5 and calculate that. And there it is. And when I graph that, now it looks awful, but remember, I'm only going to worry about it for the, the, this part right here. So it looks pretty good for that part. All right, let me go ahead and do a quadratic on the next one. So stat, calculate, again a quadratic. This time on L5 and L6. And I'm going to put this in my next available, which is Y6. And calculate that. The R squared looks pretty good. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and turn off that Y5 for right now because I just want to see Y6. Remember, I'm just more concerned about the, the middle of this graph. 
And for right here, you can see it's pretty doggone good, okay? And then I'll finally do the last data. So stat, calculate only. This time I'm gonna use a cubic. I could have done a quadratic, but just to be different, a cubic. Now for L7, I have to go to the list and find L7 in the list. And there it is. Similarly, for the Y list is uh, second list, and I have to find L8. Paste that in there. And what are we going to go up to Y7 now? Alpha trace Y7. Calculate. And now for the last part, let's see how that graph looks for the last part. Turn off Y6. Keep Y7 on. And graph just for the last part you can see it's pretty good so now what I want to do is put those all three together into one piecewise function okay and uh, and then graph it and see how that looks all right so let's go ahead and put this together I'm going to go down to y equals I'm going to turn off the the y7 I don't want that graph by itself and I'm going to go down to y9 just to give myself some breathing room here and uh, that's going to be found, piecewise is found under math, and the up arrow is the second to the last under math. And I can go as many as five pieces or as few as one, but I want three pieces, so okay, three pieces. My first piece is going to be Y5, but I only want it from 1 to 242, so I want 1. And then second math is where I get my inequalities. But there's a new one now called conditions. And number five is one is less than or equal to x and x is less than or equal to 242. So I'm going to go with that. My second piece is going to be y6. So I'm going to paste y6 there. And I want it between 242 and 335. So again, I'll do that second test. Uh, over to conditions and number five again is what I want for that between idea 335 and then finally this one is going to be y7 alpha trace to find that and y7 and this one I just want strictly greater than 335 so uh, x is second test a greater than is number three and that's going to be 335 this is going to be all in one powder blue color, okay? So, see what you think. And, oh my, that fits really, really well. So, that's kind of cool. So, this is how you can be clever and create piecewise functions to um, model data that is kind of unusual. So let's go ahead and show you the website here. Again, um, this is the left-hand side of the website. This is the name right here. Um, it is case sensitive, but you can get the COVID vaccination student PDF or the teacher PDF, the program, uh, the Excel spreadsheet with that data, uh, an Inspire that has both the COVID vaccination and the case data, and here's all the case data, or a zip folder with all of that. Okay, you can do one at a time or all of them, your choice. I'd also have you take a look at the Families of Functions video series. Um, there's a, a quick reference guide. I, it's a must for you. If you want to learn how to do any kind of transformation graphing, it's a, a video series with like 300 videos, 400 examples. Great for review, independent study, flip classroom, so much more. There are things on there about slope and linear equations. Um, all kinds of good stuff. So here's the PDF of families of functions. Uh, these are the parent functions. You can see there are many of them here. Uh, these are the transformations, how to graph the transformations generically. And then uh, the linear family and slope. On the left side is the example that's in the video. The right is the now you try one, a self-assessment. Um, these are all the links to them. Uh, even though there are two links of the same video, just have two different names. Uh, exp explain slope, parabolas or the squaring function, absolute value. I highly recommend this to you if you need to do any kind of work with transformation graphing. So thanks for watching. I hope this was worthwhile for you. Uh, contact me if you have any kind of questions and pass this information along to your teachers.
Have a good one.